There is much to be learned from people who have lived on this land much longer than we have. A knowledge that manifests itself not only in their relationships with nature, their songs and epics, their technology and creations, but in their very survival. Only by being aware of this heritage of the indigenous can we find not only our roots, but our direction. Their pride and ours, captured in one word, Dayao. Nature creates, man imagines, and man recreates. Great events take place, man remembers, and man reimagines. Through a piece of music, a song, a ritual, a chant, an oral joust, even an epic. And as these grow and are eventually passed on, the memory becomes a code of conduct or a collection of lessons, a manual that teaches one how to be perhaps a good Maranao or a good Ifugao or a Mangyan, and hopefully an ideal of one's identity. The oral traditions of our indigenous peoples are the subject of our second exploration, yet another source of Dayao, our knowledge, our pride. Music and rhythm are the very basis of chanted epics. Unspoken, wordless repetitions, transforming, mutating into universes of their own. Before we listen to the indigenous epics, I want you first to listen to a Maguindanao virtuoso. Galit Samawan Sulaiman, who was among the first indigenous artists to be awarded the Gawad Manilikhanang Bayan. A true virtuoso, Samawan's instrument of choice was a kudyapit, or two-stringed lute. Its two strings seemingly a metaphor for its universal opposites, of constancy and change. The music he chose to master was a reflection of the stately court traditions of the Maguindanao. The late maestro was renowned all over Maguindanao as a true artist of his people an artist who chose to keep Maguindanao classical tradition alive and to embellish it with his own genius. His melodic and rhythmic permutations transform, mutate into a universe of their own. Very different but equally powerful are the rhythms beaten out on gongs and bamboo floors by the southern Palawanon. Here, another Gawad Manlilika ng Bayan awardee, the late Masino Intaray, was recorded by the National Commission on Culture and Arts as he led the Basal and Sam in their village in the highlands of Brooks Point. Their playing was made even more hypnotic by the women who beat out an equally complex rhythm of the tarek with their bare feet on the bamboo floor. When the human voice musically mirrors and echoes the complexities, textual meanings, and flow of narratives, the chant is born. One voice telling a story, another voice answering and pushing the narrative. Then, 
a whole community joining in. The chant is born. The epic unfolds. In the Tungud School in Lagawe, Ifugao, teacher Fatima Ngalawen has devoted a good part of her career to training selected pupils in the chanting of the Ifugao epic, The Hudhud. She selects a girl from each batch who will be the lead chanter or the Munhawe, as well as others who will form the chorus or Munabui. Then batch after batch, she teaches them the chant of their ancestors. The Hood Hood has been recognized by the UNESCO as one of the masterpieces of humanity's intangible heritage. The Hood Hood recounts the adventures of the Ifugao epic heroes, the most popular being Aliguyon. The culture hero, whom legend says taught Ifugao women the hoodhood of other heroes. Traditionally, the hoodhood is sung during harvest by entire communities. It is also sung during important ritual occasions. Although it is traditionally associated with women, men are also allowed to sing in the chorus. Year after year, the Tungwood school chanters have won local competitions and have been invited to perform in Manila. And with every passing batch, the legacy of this chant is passed on to the young Ifugaos. I invited the elders to chant and then I recorded their song. Afterwards, I must have to learn the song. After two weeks, I memorized it, and then that's the time I taught it to the children. Meron pong konting changes kasi pag from the elders direct to the children, hindi po nila makuha yung regional beauty ng hudhud chant. So, may adjustments ka. Before I taught it to the children, line by line, there are many words that I cannot understand. Some words were very deep, so I always call on the Munhawe to explain the meaning of the hudhud, and so I also explain it to the children, because we cannot change it to simpler form, because that's really the beauty of the hudhud. Fatima's lifelong dedication to teaching the hudhud has given the Tungud chanters many distinctions and awards, but even she admits that there is so much to learn and preserve. It came to my mind that we should preserve it by 
uh, singing it, telling stories because Hoodhood has 200 stories. After classes, the children always come to my door and say, Mom, are we going to practice the Hoodhood? And say, uh, you wait for me after dismissal. Worthy role models for the young chanters are the elders of their village, whose chanting is full of primal power and spontaneity. Although the hoodhood is traditionally chanted by women in the fields during harvest, Manong Leonardo and his neighbors know it well and will sing it, male and female elders in one chorus, to make sure it is passed on to young Ifugaos. Vintage footage of the campus of the Mindanao State University shows Maranao students dramatizing a chant of their own people, the Darangin. An epic of approximately 72,000 lines, it stands side by side with the Koran as a foundation of Maranao culture. The epic is not primarily Islamic in nature. Scholars have pointed out that much of its content stems from pre-Islamic times. The stories that make up the epic meld both Islamic and pre-Islamic tenets. The result of this melding, this distillation, is a code of personhood, a record of what the Maranao describes as Anonen Arawaten, all that is worth emulating. Twenty-five song cycles make up the Darangin, of which only 18 have been recorded and studied. Although a majority of the songs deal with the adventures and romances, other songs deal with the laws on kingship, succession, warfare, diplomacy, and statesmanship. Because they are essentially narrative, all great epics lend themselves well to dance and performance. The Darangin is so rich that chapters and vignettes can readily become performances in themselves. The stories become chants and songs. The songs, dances. The dances, object lessons in the behavior of traditional role models. The honor is a professional singer, dancer and chantress whose services are much in demand in Maranao society. During weddings and parties, she is hired to perform traditional songs and display skills like playing the kulintangan. But more than a hired pro, the honor is expected to act and behave in the manner of the legendary princesses of the Darangin, a role model and a living embodiment of all that is graceful and gracious in a Maranao woman. Natutuwa akong maging honor kasi noon yung teta ko, honor siya, sumasama ako sa kanya. I realized ko na maganda pala yung magiging honor. Kailangan ng honor, pag pumupunta doon, maganda, maganda siya, inayos yung mukha, pati damit niya maganda, para pagdating doon, maganda siya tingnan. At saka yung boses, yung parang sabi natin yung parang hindi na sinasabi na yung boses natin masyo yung matigas, yung medyo may pagkalambot yung boses. Malagang malaga sa akin yung pagiging honor ko. Kahit pa paano na yung mga pamilya ko, tsaka yung, yung kamag-anak, yung ka ka relatives ko, na pwede rin nila kay pag malaki kasi marunong kahit pa paano may karir din ako. Older footage shows another honor demonstrating the proper behavior expected of a Maranao princess. 
again, influenced by the role models found in the Darangin. Biases and misconceptions are quite palpable when it comes to our Muslim fellow men. Their image sometimes clouds our ability to see the richness of their traditions and the innate nobility instilled in them by their ethics. When man commits his epics, his stories, his feelings into a written text, he commits these to more than just memory. He puts down in writing not only his very being, but the essence of his entire race. And for that, one needs more than just a chanted song. One needs a syllabary in a system of writing. Pre-Hispanic syllabaries devised by our ancestors were widespread among the peoples of the Philippine archipelago. However, they now survive only among four indigenous cultural communities in Mindoro and Palawan. The most famous of these is a syllabary of the Hanunuo Mangyan of Mindoro. The scholar Anton Pusma describes the unique qualities of the Mangyan syllabary. The Mangyan culture, the, the Ambahan, is still alive. It is still being practiced by the Mangyans. If it not, was not for their value, their cultural value, I wouldn't mind it. Uh, encourage the Mangyans, especially the older people. Do not forget your, uh, to teach your children uh, what you uh, inherited from your forefathers. The late Ginao Bilog was a master of the syllabary and its use in the Ambahan, the traditional poetic verse form of the Mangyan. In this rare footage, the Gawad Manilikanang Bayan Awardee demonstrates his mastery of the syllabary and his skill in etching his own verse on bamboo. Ito ay galing pa sa aming mga ninuno. Noong una, ma marunong din po ang aking ama. Kaya gumaya po ako sa aking ama. Kung minsan, mayroon po kaming ambahan na tataginip, na panaginip po laang. Ito po ay kahit ilan taon, kahit sampung taon, basta hindi mabasa, hindi masira, hindi madudurong ito. Pag mga duwa, magkunkunusigun layan, magbilin kay. We wanted to make sure that the, the very important epics of the Philippines, especially Darangan and Hudhud, uh, will uh, survive the passage of time. And initially, what we did was to submit these epics for declaration by UNESCO as. Uh, masterpieces of the oral and intangible heritage of humanity. These are the epics, Hudhud and the Rangin. Because the moment they are declared as such, it will be easier to get funding support for us to encourage the young people to have programs so that the young people can be taught the traditions. Music that is both sophisticated and powerful. Songs and chants worth passing on to future generations. Epics that show us ideals of heroism. Syllabaries and alphabets where memories and emotions are captured. All gifts of the mind and the intellect. If we could all remove the blinders from our eyes and dismiss these gifts as tribal or ethnic or even primitive, how much richer our own modern worldview would be and how much more we could feel and rejoice in Dayao, our knowledge, our pride. <laughs>